Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome back to another episode of PyTest Basics. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the basics of PyTest fixtures. So it's often the case that we want to perform some sort of initialization of our test functions. However, we generally don't want to put this initialization code into the body of our tests themselves. And there are a couple of reasons for this. So one reason is that it just clutters our test bodies. So instead of just having you know, the code we want to test inside of a test function, we're now going to have some initialization code mixed in. So it can make our tests less clear at the code level. Another good reason is that um, we often want to perform the same or similar kind of initialization across a number of different tests. So it'd be really nice if we had a way to say, hoist out this initialization code and put it in some sort of common area for other tests uh, to use. That way it can be more uniformly applied. Now, the way that we do this in PyTest is through these things called test fixtures or PyTest fixtures. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So let's go ahead and get started. And we'll open up our test fixtures 0.py example. And inside here, we have three Python functions. We have our function square, right? That squares a number. We have our test for a square function called test square. And then we have our PyTest fixture called initial value. Now, our PyTest fixture is really just another Python function to which we've added this decorator at pytest.fixture. We get access to this by just importing PyTest up here. Now, how exactly does a test use or request a fixture? So all a test needs to do is to add the name of the fixture to its parameter list. So down here in our test square test, we've just added initial value to its parameter list. And this is saying that test square is requesting the initial value fixture. So when our test is going to run, it's first going to get the return value from our fixture by calling this initial value fixture. Okay, so let's go ahead and quit out of here. And we can start by just running collection for our test. So we can do pytest dash dash collect only on test fixtures 0.py. And we see that we collect our single test, right? So collected one item test square. So a bit unlike, um, when we use pytest mark parameterize, where we added a parameter to our test, and then that value showed up um, inside of the test ID that we saw when we collected the tests, we see that our test ID hasn't changed here when we've added our parameter, which is our fixture name, right? Um, now, in fact, our fixture hasn't even run yet. So our fixture runs after collection when we're getting towards actually running our test. So we see that our test ID also has not changed. It's still just test square. Okay, so another nice thing we can do from the command line is we can see what fixtures we have available to us in a particular directory or file. Now to do this, all we need to run is pytest dash dash fixtures and then provide a path. So in this case, we'll just add a path to our file, test fixtures 0.py. And we see a whole bunch of different fixtures. And then at the very bottom, we see the ones that we've defined inside of test fixtures 0. So we can see our initial value fixture defined at line eight of our file. We also see that we could have added a doc string into our code, and that would have been printed out here as well. So we have a nice way of adding documentation and being able to easily access it just from the command line, which, which can be very convenient. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our test. It's the last thing we have to do. And we'll run test fixture 0.py, and we see that our test runs and completes successfully. So our test was able to call basically our fixture, get that value, and then run you know square, and then our verification. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to our next example here inside of test fixtures 1.py. So there are often cases, or there are also cases where we want some fixture to run you know for every single test. Now it would be really inconvenient if we had to go through the function signatures of every single test and add. Um, say that fixture to the parameter list, because we may have tens or hundreds or thousands of different functions, and we don't want to have to modify, you know, 10,000 different functions just to add a single uh, fixture name. Now, fortunately, PyTest provides a way um, around this by giving us access to something called auto use fixtures, or basically fixtures that will always be run whether or not they're requested. So inside of this file here, we have four Python functions three of which are exactly the same as we saw in the last file. So we still have our initial value fixture, which returns five. We have our square function, and then we have our test called test square. But in addition to those three, we have another fixture 
called log start, which just prints test starting. Now the one difference with log start that we've made is that to our fixture decorator, we've added this argument auto use is equal to true. And by doing this, we're basically saying, I want this test to be automatically used. So whether or not our test has requested this fixture, it's going to run anyway. So down here, even though test square is only going is only directly requesting our initial value fixture, it's also going to run our log start fixture because it's an auto use fixture. Okay, so let's go ahead and quit out of here. And we're going to run pytest fixtures just to see what fixtures we have in this file. So test fixtures one. And of course, at the bottom, we see our two fixtures. We see log start and initial value. Now we can go ahead and run our test as well, run pytest test fixtures uh, 1.py, and we should see that print from our log start fixture. However, we see nothing gets printed to the screen. So just like pytest will um, try to make sure our output isn't cluttered by hiding away things like our skip reasons and our xfail reasons, the same is true about things like stood out and stood error from tests. However, we can get around this by just adding dash s to the end of our test saying, you know, I don't want you to capture um, or standard out and standard error. I want to see my prints. So we can add this dash s, and when we, when we do that and we run our test again, we see our print. So from test fixtures 1.py, before our test runs, we see our print of test starting from that auto use fixture we have. Right? Remember, our test didn't directly request this fixture, but it ran anyway because it's an auto use fixture. Then afterwards, um, our test runs and completes successfully. Right, so that's a little bit on auto use fixtures. Okay, so the final example we have today is in this test fixtures 2.py. So there are also cases where our fixtures are doing some sort of expensive computation or maybe grabbing some resource. So instead of having this fixture say run multiple times and say recompute this very expensive thing, we can instead, instead set a scope for this fixture saying when we want this fixture to run. So here, up at the very top here, we have our fixture called initial value. Um, and then inside of our decorator, we're adding an argument of scope. Now again, the scope is saying, how, how many times do I want this fixture to run? So a scope of module says, I want this fixture to run once per module. So basically once per file with tests. Likewise, uh, the default is function, which says I want this fixture to run once per function. Or we can also specify class to say I want this to run once per class, or session to say I want this fixture to run once per PyTest session. So this is a very nice thing we can do because it says we can reuse the value generated from this fixture for other tests in the same scope. So in this case, we're specifying module. So all the tests in this file will be able to reuse this value that we're returning, right, five. So we should only see a single printout right, when we run our tests, right? Because a fixture will only be run once per module here. Okay, so what other Python functions do we have inside of this test? We have two functions, square and cube, one that squares another, another that cubes another. And then we have our tests for those functions, test square and test cube. And both of these tests are requesting the same fixture, right? So they're both requesting initial value. However, because we've set the scope to module, our fixture should only run once, and that value should be reused across both of these tests. So let's go ahead and quit out of here. And of course, the first thing we'll do is take a look at our fixture. So we'll do pytest dash dash fixtures for test fixtures 2.py. And inside of here at the bottom, we see our fixtures defined, uh, defined in test fixtures 2, which is our initial value fixture and we can see that it also shows us that it's at the module scope. So it's not at the default, which is the function scope. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and run our test. So we can run pytest test fixtures uh, 2.py. And remember, we'll add dash s because our fixture is doing a print that we want to see. And we can see here that from test fixtures 2.py, we see just a single print generating an initial value. Then both of our tests run and complete successfully. So even though both of our tests are requesting that fixture, that fixture is only run once because we set the scope equal to module. So that result is shared across all the tests in that module, which is just our two tests, test square and test cube. Now we can go back into that function. So we can go back or back into that file, test fixtures two, 
and we can change the fixture of the scope. So we could either just say maybe delete the scope, then it would default back to function, um, or we could manually specify uh, say function here. So now our fixture will be run once per function. So now we should see two calls to initial value, so two prints, because both test square and test cube, which are requesting this fixture, will both have to call um, our initial value fixture. Okay, so we'll go ahead and rerun this with uh, test fixtures 2.py with dash s. And now we see two prints. So we see uh, from test fixtures 2.py, we see a print of generating initial value, then our test runs and completes successfully. Then we see another print of getting initial value, then our second test runs and completes successfully. So we can really use um, this scope setting to cache values for other tests to use, which can be a very powerful thing if we're doing, say, expensive computations, or like I said, if we have some sort of shared resource that we just want to pass between our tests rather than trying to reacquire every single time. Okay, now that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. We're going to be doing a, a number on PyTest fixtures because there really is so much to cover, but that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. Of course, you can find the more documentation on PyTest fixtures from the main PyTest uh, documentation website at docs.pytest.org. So here I'm on a page all about PyTest fixtures. So I'll go ahead and link this below. You can also find all of these examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. So you can find them under repositories and then under PyTest. So everything is under this source directory here. Likewise, I've written a number of guides on PyTest as well. So you can access those under the PyTest guide repository, and I'll providing, be providing a link to this introduction to PyTest fixtures below the video as well. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for this time. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.